and there are very many causes for it. Um, one of the problems with dizziness is that the term is very general and there are different forms of dizziness. There could be lightheadedness or there could be actual um, experience of spinning attacks. Um, and one of the first things that I ask when I'm seeing a patient with dizziness is exactly what they're experiencing so that I can get a, a feel for um, what they're experiencing and that helps me make a diagnosis. Um, the main reasons why people suffer with dizziness are firstly problems with the balance system themselves itself um, but other people can experience dizziness because of other general medical issues such as heart problems, blood pressure problems, um, diabetes etc. Uh, so uh, the balance system itself is a complex system and it has three main components. You've got the balance organ itself in the inner ear, you've got your vision which is a very important component of uh, the balance system and you also have uh, joint position sensors that tell your body where you are in space and the inputs from those three areas are integrated together within the cerebellum which is in the back part of the brain. The um, uh, problems that can develop in any of those areas can then lead on to dizziness. As I've mentioned, there are a, a significant number of causes for dizziness and uh, some of them are more urgent than others. Um, there are also forms of dizziness that can come on acutely and more severely um, and it's very important to try and differentiate those different types of uh, more urgent forms of dizziness. Um, the forms of dizziness that come on uh, acutely often require urgent medical attention because the patient is feeling so unwell they need help in trying to get their symptoms settled down and there are very many medical um, solutions to that. There's lots of different types of medication that you can use to uh, help settle down balance um, symptoms um, and there are also uh, physical therapies, uh, vestibular rehabilitation that can help with the uh, acute onset of symptoms. Um, in terms of the more serious diseases that can cause dizziness, um, there are, uh, for example, inner ear tumours that we need to identify. So there are some forms of dizziness that might precipitate a scan that would then um, potentially identify uh, an inner ear abnormality such as a tumour and that might then need to go on to treatment, although the vast majority of tumours associated with dizziness don't actually need treatment. In terms of the different types of dizziness, uh, the, the key two types of dizziness that I always try and differentiate are that feeling of lightheadedness and a feeling of true vertigo, which is a sensation of movement, either you within the environment or the environment moving around you. And the first symptom often or the first form of dizziness often isn't actually um, related to a problem with the balance organ itself. It can be a, a, a medical issue like high blood pressure or even low blood pressure or changes in blood pressure when you stand up from sitting. Um, it could also be uh, due to medical uh, problems such as diabetes. Um, and uh, there is a significant number of people that experience um, balance disturbance because of anxiety or stress. Um, sometimes that can be associated with other underlying balance problems and uh, it's not unusual for uh, there to be more than one issue that we have to address when it comes to dealing with somebody with, with dizziness. Um, in terms of uh, the second form of dizziness, uh, that is vertigo or the, that sensation of movement, that form of dizziness is often related to problems within the inner ear itself. Uh, from that perspective, there are three main types of uh, inner ear problem that I see in my practice. There are obviously other rarer ones as well, but the key ones are a condition called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or BPPV. The second is something called vestibular neuronitis. And the third is a condition called Menier's disease. 
BPPV is the commonest form of inner ear dizziness, and um, it's usually very easily treated. Um, there's a maneuver that we can do, and 75% of the time when we do that the first time, it works really well to cure the problem. And if we have to repeat it, it's successful in 95% of cases the second time round. And BPPV is caused by uh, some crystals that are a normal part of the inner ear anatomy becoming dislodged and floating off into um, the wrong part of the balance organ where they interfere with uh, the body's ability to, to detect head movements, uh, hence the um, uh, vertigo that's brought on by specific head movements. Vestibular neuronitis is either a viral infection um, or uh, a, a interruption to the blood supply to part of the inner ear that can then lead on to a very acute onset of vertigo that can last anything up to 24 or 48 hours. And quite often in that condition, you feel nausea and some vomiting. And um, with that condition, uh, you often have to take anti-sickness medication to help you get over that initial phase of, of feeling unwell. But quite often you feel better after 24 or 48 hours and then usually the condition doesn't recur. Um, in terms of the menyes, um, that is a condition that is typified by episodes of vertigo lasting anything up to 24 hours. And during those episodes of vertigo, you often experience hearing loss and tinnitus in one of the ears, the ear that's affected. And then usually that episode resolves and the hearing loss and tinnitus improve, although you might be left with some residual problems. And that condition is um, very unpredictable. The episodes of vertigo can come daily or monthly or weekly. Um, sometimes it occurs for a short period of time and then never comes back again. But usually through a detailed discussion in clinic, we can identify what the underlying cause for the dizziness is and we can then instigate effective treatment to try and make you better. There are some forms of dizziness that are a very acute onset, and it's those uh, patients that need to seek em emergency medical attention. Um, you'll know if you experience that degree of vertigo because you feel incredibly unwell. Um, you often feel nauseous and you might actually be vomiting as well. Um, it's quite disabling and you often need help um, when um, trying to find medical attention. Um, if that is the case, then um, it's very important to either contact your general practitioner or um, go up to your local accident and emergency department. Um, some uh, other private facilities also have emergency services and I'm happy to see emergency patients in my practice too, if that's appropriate. Um, but essentially, uh, when you go to the, to the medical center, they will give you uh, uh, probably an injection of an anti-sickness medication to help you feel better acutely. It takes um, half an hour or an hour for the effects of that to kick in. And you might still feel a degree of nausea and vomiting and um, uh, vertigo, but um, hopefully that will take the edge off the symptoms. And then over the subsequent um, few hours, the vertigo attacks usually get back to the point where you can cope with it. Uh, quite often people feel that they want to go to sleep once they get to that point and then when they wake up usually they feel significantly better than they did um, before they went to sleep. In terms of whether or not uh, the dizziness that you're experiencing will continue in the long run, it very much depends on the underlying cause for the dizziness. Um, in terms of inner ear problems, the condition BPPV that I mentioned earlier is usually readily treated and um, it, can, it can recur. And if it does recur, then the treatment can be re repeated. And most people get complete resolution of their symptoms from that perspective. In terms of the second condition I mentioned, vestibular neuronitis, um, that's usually a one-off acute vertigo event. And um, the, pa the patient, Symptoms usually resolve after 24 or 48 hours and they start to feel much better fairly quickly. Um, but there are some people where their um, general balance system isn't coping very well with the loss of function that's related to the, the acute event. 
and they might find that they get ongoing balance disturbance um, in the long run. And, and those patients often respond really well to uh, vestibular rehabilitation, which is essentially a form of physiotherapy. And most of the time, we can get people back to their um, at the same level of balance function that they had prior to the incident. In terms of Meniere's disease, which is the third inner ear condition that I mentioned, and that is a disease that has a very wide range of disease severity. So the episodes of vertigo can occur once a week, once a month, once a day. But for some people that have persistent episodes of vertigo, there are very many treatments available, ranging from dietary change through medical therapies, um, through injections of medications into the ear, um, and almost always we can get a resolution to the, um, uh, the vertigo attacks in Meniere's disease. Um, in terms of all the other forms of, of um, balance disturbance, um, again, it very much depends on the underlying medical condition. But I think the key message is that there are usually treatments that work extremely well for patients with balance disturbance.